welcome to Dubstock Live, brought to you by Mancini Sleep World with Zena Kata. I'm Kareth Burke. Steph, come back. Happy birthday tomorrow. <laughs> you know, but come back as, as long as you're as long as you're healthy. We know the Warriors are going to try to figure out if he's uh, healthy. He's going to join the team in Los Angeles ahead of the Lakers game on Saturday. Steph will practice with the team on Friday. After that practice is his next reevaluation date. I would say the chances are, I would say it's trending upwards that Steph would play in that Lakers game. We know, of course, no Steph Curry tonight. And then Draymond Green tried to give it a go, warmed up, did not play. Mm. He was out right before the game with low back soreness. So when he added up, no Steph, no Draymond. Uh, there wasn't a lot of shooting in this game. There were a lot of turnovers, not a lot of assists, just a whole discombobulation for the Warriors. What did you think about how this one played out, Zena? It was unfortunate. Um, because it was a, I don't know, I think it was a strong effort from the Warriors in terms of they tried. In the first half, the ball was moving. There was decent pace. They were keeping up with the Dallas Mavericks. And then throughout the game, you saw that Steph is seriously, seriously, dearly missed. Uh, the offense stalled. The interior defense was non-existent. Mm -hmm. And there you go, Steph and Dre gone. Um, and then the stars that were supposed to step up in the absence of a Stephen Curry did not. Eight of 25 tonight, and they were quiet for the most part. Of course, Andrew Wiggins did end up with 17, but that was six of six from free throw line that helped him, right? Overall, it was, it was unfortunate because it was a <laughs> strong effort, but not enough. Yeah, I'm looking at this points in the paint. The Mavericks had 20 more than the Warriors. Out of 44 made field goals, only six for the Mavs were three-point shots. So inside, inside, inside. Mm. No answer there. And then you can see where the Warriors have trouble in the margins, especially when they're playing shorthanded. We do want to be fair. Um, but when the Mavericks launched that 16-4 to fourth quarter run, it's like, okay, that's that's it. The Warriors like kept in contact for most of the game, but that's when the game started to get out of control and there were Warriors mistakes peppered in there. There were 10 consecutive missed shots, three turnovers, one technical for Chris Paul. He made sure the referee got the technical that was as hilarious. well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, we should talk about JK's night in this one because he did have the aggression early. He was attacking early. What did you think about JK? You know, when there was a lack of shooting from maybe Clay and Wiggins and CP3, actually those guys combined three of 15 from the field in the first half. JK was the offense tonight. Mm -hmm. How'd he do? Amazingly. He did not back down from the load that was put on his shoulder entering this game. He has become that guy. And you want that for your team because now it's an anomaly for him to do poorly. It's more of an anomaly for him to score under 10 points or under 40% from the field than it is for him to have a night like this. It's funny, I got a text from someone that doesn't cover the men's game but is in the world of sports and covering the sports, and they said, holy moly, what's gotten into Kaminga today? Mm -hmm. And I was like, this is actually pretty typical Kaminga. If he's not scoring like this is when you're like, what's going on with Kaminga? So... It's what you want to see out of a young a rookie, not rookie, but three-year vet, um, still younger player on the team, to have that confidence coming to the game. I was very, very impressed with how diligent he was about attacking the basket. Yeah, he's 21 years old. He is younger than some yeah. of the rookies. Uh, he is our BMW <laughs> ultimate performer, arrived at 27 points. I also noticed he had his three-point shot going. He attempted some threes in this one, two for two, got it done on the free throw line as well, nine of 10. But this is what happens when you attack. And this is Jonathan Kaminga making himself a name on opponents' uh, um, Scoring charts, that's not what I'm looking for. Pre-game uh, scouts. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> looking for it. But he helped the team. Somebody had to take the load exactly as you mentioned when the other guys weren't scoring. Kaminga, 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 looking again like he can be an unstoppable force. And when you think about this game and you look at that play right now, this is what was the struggle for the Warriors, attacking the basket. You mentioned the stat earlier. They outscored the Warriors in the, uh, in the paint by 20. And every single time they got in there, it was like Daniel Gafford was handing out tickets to his block party. 13 blocks overall for the Mavericks on the Warriors. And Jonathan Kaminga wasn't phased by that. He still found his way into the paint, whether he was slashing off ball, whether he had the ball and was attacking himself. You saw him be incredibly aggressive to the basket, which is what you need, especially in a game where everyone else is a little hesitant and is trying to get away from contact in the paint. He was going towards it. And so 
That's really what you love to see because even if you're not having your shots fall, what happens? Nine of 10 from the free throw line. And we've talked about this before on this show. One of the greatest things about Jonathan Kaminga and one of the greatest things you can have in a scorer on your team is someone that can attack hard and then finish the free throws. There you go. That's huge. Mm -hmm. 13 blocks for the Mavericks. Man, uh, there was a moment when Draymond Green was visible in this game. Take a look at him coaching up Jonathan Kaminga. He says Draymond making an impact from the bench. Yes, what a shame that Draymond was out of this game with a lower back injury. Something to follow. This was not the first time he's been on the injury report with that uh, with that back. He, was, he appeared on the injury report for the last game. He was probable and he played, of course, but something to monitor going forward. It kind of forces the Warriors again with these injuries to play with a new starting lineup their 22nd different starting lineup of the season That's it is hard crazy. to find a rhythm when you're in that uh, in that kind of way right. somebody in the starting lineup Trace Jackson Davis this is interesting if you're going to play without Draymond at center okay why not try somebody who looks more like a true center <laughs> there you go this is a nice opportunity for the rookie the rookie had an opportunity tonight to play against other active centers and this was great because he got to see two different types in lively another athletic center very similar to him and then in Daniel Gafford a very blocky solid type of center that you're also going to see within the Western Conference and as they try and make it to the playoffs hope on the other side of the country too so for Trey Jackson Davis this was a true test of how can I get up and down the floor in a quick pace game with a center who's just like me, mm -hmm. who likes to jump up above the rim, who likes to rim run, who likes to who plays well in the pick and roll. And he really got a good test out of particularly Derek Lively, the second. What I also loved about this game was that you uh, Trace Jackson Davis had an opportunity to practice his pick and roll defense because man, it was on the scouting report, it was clear that they kept saying, make it so that. Luca, whoever is guarding Luca, has to go off of uh, a screen for whoever is um, Trace Jackson Davis is guarding. Switches, 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 and at in the beginning of the game, I won't, you know, Trace Jackson Davis only had one foul, so he was doing a decent job of staying on the ground, keeping his defender in front of him for the most part, um, and not fouling. And so this is a really great practice as well. Of how can you contain off of that pick and roll? Can you be disciplined? Uh, playing really, really great pick and roll guards that can come off quickly and with aggression. All right, and we just saw TJD have a, another test. It was Victor Wembanyama. Okay, yeah. now you've got the lively test. Let's take a little snapshot at some of the video of these guys battling it out. This is in the third quarter. You got to remember that TJD was the 57th pick in the draft, lively the 12th pick in the draft. I feel like maybe that was a little undercurrent to this. Let me mm. test myself against you. So TJD blocks lively, lively gets the rebound and the dunk, and then off this tray bat, uh, clay bad pass. The Mavericks sending it up the floor, and there's Lively. There you go, inside, beating him. So I, I just, I thought that that was like a, a young guy test. That was sort of interesting. Maybe TJD trying to size him up a little bit. Um, also interesting and totally random that Lively the second, where's number two? Okay, that's, there you go. that's, <laughs> that's, that's a way that's to true. remember. That's there true. you go. Um, what did you think about TJD? I think he had 10 and 9 tonight, the impact of his rebounds uh, as well. Well, break that, that rebound nine down, mm -hmm. six offensive rebounds. There you go. That's huge. When you think about what the Warriors want to do from a rebounding perspective, number two in the league, obviously that's what they want to do. They want to attack the glass. They want to be able to provide opportunities for their team. But being able to get the offensive rebounds, resetting things, especially with how stagnant the offense was, the Warriors need as many chances as they can get at the basket. And so him being able to get those offensive rebounds, being, uh, you know, just tactile around the basket and also getting up. There were some that he finished right up at the at the rim and, and you know, tipped in. It was like, OK, TJD, like that's what Gafford does really well. And so I think that his rebounding was probably the most critical thing that he did tonight for the Warriors, especially considering um, how difficult it was to get around those bigs. All right, and TJD was at the podium. Let's take a listen. Nah, he played a great game. He's just got to stay aggressive. When he's aggressive, the sky's the limit. Same question I have with JK, just their, you know, their length around the rim, just in what ways did you feel that and how much of a challenge is that to navigate? Yeah, um, it's hard, especially when Draymond's out. Um, they got two really good um, defenders in Gafford and Lively, and they're rotating. 
big, so they're staying fresh. Um, so they're tough to go against. Um, I think that during the game, they shrunk the paint a lot, and um, they kind of let us not necessarily shoot wide, shoot wide open shots, but they were playing drive, lob, and all of that stuff, trying to cut that out and make us shoot jump shots. And so um, they had a great game plan, and we're just going to have to watch the film and fix it. What kind of perspective do you guys feel like you've gained collectively that you can apply moving forward playing these last few games without Steph? Um, it's just kind of, I think it's, I think it's good for us, honestly, um, to, uh, gel, uh, obviously Steph's the biggest part of our team, but at the same time, we can't let him carry that whole load. Um, we got to step up as well. So, um, finding out what guys do well, finding out what guys don't do well, and then just getting some team chemistry together. Um, I think it's huge. How much do you focus on the standings at all with everything bunched up? It's at this point. Yeah, um, obviously it's it's always on our mind. Uh, we got to take it one game at a time, and um, that's that's in LA on Saturday. So the Mavs are a team you're going to see two more times this season. You might see them in the play-in mm -hmm. um, at full strength. How do you think you match up with them? Um, I think we match up well. Um, I mean, it was a game through three quarters. They went on a run. Um, that's basketball. But um, at the end of the day, I think us have full strength versus them at full strength. I think that's a battle, and um, I like our chances. All right, so the team on the way <laughs> to Los Angeles. Don't worry about it. She's looking up numbers. She's got her <laughs> notes. That's I'm right. trying to make sure I got my notes that's right, right She's always prepared. Um, yeah, the team on their way tonight to Los Angeles. So they have the off day. They've got the practice day. They've got the game day. Okay, you can tell how got, much people are yeah. looking forward to turning the page on this one. All right, we need to mention that Jonathan Kaminga, is going to be the podcast guest tomorrow on Dubs Talk. Monty Poole and I talked to JK for about 40 minutes. Wow. Wide That's ranging. Great. Some That's deep great. topics, including what happened with Steve. Does Steve coach him harder than other players? That's a unique perspective that he has. Mm. His all-star goals, okay, the all-star game is going to be at Chase Center next season. Does he want to be a part of it? And how long does he expect to be a warrior? We wow. went there in a lot Ooh. of places. Please listen to this interview. He was phenomenal. Very thoughtful. All right, when we come back, Clay Thompson, BP, who would you put in the starting lineup against the Lakers? Oh, we're going to discuss when we come back on Dubs Talk Live, brought to you by Mancini Sleep World. Dubs Talk Live is presented by Mancini Sleep World. Visit us during our spring clearance sale. Save big on premium mattresses, plus free delivery. Hurry in now or visit us online at sleepworld.com. Hey, everybody. We've got D, Otis, Arjun, Catherine, HR, Maximus, the usual folks here talking in the lineup. Dee's asking what time. I think that's for what time does the podcast debut. Um, the audio version of the podcast will be out first, I believe. That's going to be live pretty early in the morning, as I understand okay. it. So look on Apple, look on Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. And then you can see that sit down TV version soon. Shoot, I wish I had that information before I came on here, Dee. But this is a really big interview for us. Oh, um, yeah. I'm sure you will see it promoted a lot. You can catch it on replay as well. In fact, I even listened to our um, TJD podcast that we did on January 30th oh, yeah, in yeah, anticipation yeah, of this too. game. Yeah. yeah, thank you. He was very thoughtful as well. So please, Dee, stay tuned. Stay the tuned Gary for one that. was great, too. So which one? You're great, Gary. Thank you. Yeah. I, that That's, was when I was on maternity was... leave. Oh, well, but I like Dalton those guys. With, well, yeah, yes, I'm thinking yep. of Dub Dal Talk Live. Dalton and oh, Monty sure. had it, but yep. yeah, it was really, really good. Talked to Brzezemski as well. No, it feels this is it's my favorite part of my career. The long, interviews, uninterrupted yeah. sit-down interviews because the guys at the podium, reporters ask all sorts of random things. He might get a question about Congo. He might get a question mm. about his favorite fast food restaurant in the Bay Area. He might get a question like from his rookie season. It, it's just like there's no continuity to the questions. It's really scattershot. This is an opportunity to sit down and talk Jake. to players, to follow up on things, yeah. to spend, I don't know, more than 60 seconds on a topic, yeah, like yeah. to really tease out how they're feeling about some things. Um, Jonathan Kaminga has a depth to him. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I've, I felt that even when, when I first met him, yeah. um, when he first came in in his rookie season, he definitely, I think it was Monty that just said in the post game that, you know, he's an old 21. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yeah, it does. Yeah.
Welcome back to Dubstock Live, brought to you by Mancini Sleep World. Monday is a very special day for NBC Sports Bay Area and the Warriors. Look at all of us. Uh, it's a women's environment broadcast all night long. New A's play-by-play -play announcer, Jenny Kavnar. Amazing. Can't wait to meet her. And the China Robinson, also phenomenal. We'll call the Warriors and Knicks games. Then we got the pregame show, the postgame show with Laura Britt, Zena, myself, and a special guest panelist, former Stanford great Jane Appel Marinelli. We're also going to have interviews with Tara Vandeveer and Chelsea Gray as well. So please don't miss it. Coverage begins Monday at 6 p.m. for our Women's Empowerment broadcast. I feel good about this. How are you feeling about that? I feel so good about this. I get chills every time I see my face with Jane Appel's okay. because when I was in high school um, and I was learning how to play basketball and I was learning how to be a center, a post player, uh, Jane Appel was who I was looking at across the country at Stanford. Her over the, her over the head passes, cross court passes, breaking presses were like my thing. Mm -hmm. She was so strong and so accurate with them. And oh, I just love watching her and Candace Wiggins all day. So it's crazy that I will be analyzing a game with her. Um, I told our producers I'm not going to fangirl. I don't fangirl Why? about anything. Why? I don't fangirl about like, the NBA players, but the W players. You should tell her. <sighs> should you tell her that? Like, I watched you. I think oh, she'd be so flattered. I'm absolutely going to tell her. Yes. That I'm obsessed with her. No. Yes. <laughs> Well, no, but then, but also, didn't you kind of have, I'm sorry, I hope I'm not taking a story no, from you, but right. you had one of those, like, wow, this is my career moments when you knew LaChina Robinson was a part oh, of this. Oh, absolutely. LaChina Robinson, another person, when I was at Wake Forest in grad school and I was helping out with the women's basketball team, she came, she was doing a game, but it was pregame um, or practice or something like that. I think it was a practice the day before a game. And she came in because she's a Wake Forest grad and she was talking to all of us. And I just kind of stood in the back and I was just like, Hi. 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 You're not a shy person. I am not no. a shy person, people, <laughs> at all. And she was just standing in the back and she was like, hi, hi. And she's just so lovely. Yeah, she and is. her her spirit and her aura is just bigger than life. Every single person that I know in the industry that has met her, worked with her, et cetera, they always say, she's my first call. Mm -hmm. If I'm going through something, if I don't know what to do with something, she's my first call. Um, and... I get to work with her too. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, this, yeah. this is insane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's insane. Yeah, she has the Rising Stars group as That's well right. to help black women, underrepresented women in this field, try to get their footing in the field. She is truly wonderful. And just talking to you about this now, like a women's empowerment game, it does mean something. It does. Um, whether it's for the viewers, for boys and girls watching, whether it's for us as well to appreciate each other. So Absolutely. that's going to be Monday at six o'clock. Please do turn, do tune in for that game. And I'm excited. You'll be analyzing. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, be showing yeah. up for basketball skills. I mean, yeah, she, you do it anyways, yeah, no, but thank you. it'll be cool to see you in Thank you. Role. Yeah, it'll be fun to be in a different chair. Yeah. Okay, back to this game. Andrew Wiggins here. So we talked about Jonathan Kaminga, the leading scorer tonight. Andrew Wiggins had some of the task of guarding Luka Doncic. That is not easy. Arrived at 17 and 5. We need to see aggressive Wiggins. He's going to be so important for the next 17 games. What are you looking for that says Andrew Wiggins is playing with aggression? I want to see him feel more comfortable on the floor. I feel like Andrew Wiggins has had a lot of hesitation type of moves where he's attacking and he's, and he's deferring to others, trying to find other uh, people on the floor. One thing about Wiggins is that he has a mid-range game and the Warriors need that so desperately when Steph Curry is not playing. You saw Brandon Pajemski today drive to the basket so many times and either get rejected at the basket, mm -hmm. get to the basket, and then end up throwing the ball away, trying to force it to someone else, you know, underneath the basket because he didn't want to go up in fear of being blocked. And what you saw was Pajemski drive, and there was this gap of space that was wide open with no defender. Pull up. That's what makes Chris Paul so deadly, and that's also what makes Andrew Wiggins so deadly, is that he has that. And I wish I would have seen that a little bit more out of him today. Um, I wish I would have seen his drives result in more of his own buckets as opposed to him trying to, you know, try and facilitate something else. I want to see a little bit more of Jonathan Kaminga in him, mm, okay. right? And we saw that, I think, particularly in that February stretch, right before he had to take his leave. So he's ramping up again. Luckily, I think that he's ramping up a lot faster than we've seen him in the past. But ultimately, Wiggins has to get to a point where he remembers he's him. 
He's one of the most athletic wings still to this day in this game, and he's capable of getting to his spot when he wants to. And that's what I want to see more out of him. Maybe he needs one of those Draymond pep talks. You are unstoppable. Maybe. Okay. Yeah. You are number one. <laughs> you were the number one pick. We know you have this in you. All right, when the Warriors look ahead to the Lakers, let's assume for this conversation that Steph is indeed coming back. So he's GP2, GP3 rather, CP3 rather, will be coming out of the <laughs> starting lineup. And it kind of makes me wonder, okay, what are the Warriors going to do with their starting lineup? Are they going back to the old one where Pods is starting and then you have CP3 and Clay coming off the bench? Or, mm. curveball, does Clay Thompson stay in that starting lineup? And I wonder, I'm going to do a lot of talking here. Clay loves the Lakers. Okay. Nice. His dad will be calling the game in the radio booth. He's going to have family at that game. Kobe was his favorite player. Loves to play down in L.A. And I think he kind of remembers what happened last season in the postseason. He That's wasn't true. great in that Lakers series. You know, Clay really carries things, likes to have moments of redemption. Would you let Clay stay in the starting lineup, go back to the starting lineup, rather, next to his splash brother when the Warriors have been missing space? Okay. Can I critique myself here, Zita? Go ahead. Okay, Brandon Bajemski might be saying, what on earth? Listen, I just had my 16th game with at least 10, 5, and 5. That leads all rookies, okay? He's contributing, mm -hmm. okay? So do you want to go back to how much Steve Kerr was talking about how he enjoyed that second unit with two Hall of Famers, CP3, Clay Thompson? Do you tinker with it even more? If I had to land on something, I'm going to say Clay is going to start that game. What do you think? Really? Yeah. Yeah. Even I mean, after that whole yeah, thing. Yeah, I know. I know. And this is why this is why it's fun to be like, I don't know, so I'm going to take yeah. a guess. I actually think Clay will start the game. What would you do? For me, Kareth, it's really about pace. And you need a fast pace starting out against a team like the Lakers, especially with the fact that both of them are vying for that playoff position. Um, and they're also both teams capable of having really bad off nights and off starts or teams that are also capable of having really hot starts. And Klay Thompson did perform incredibly well over the last 10 games off the bench. You're right. And so I'm thinking from a perspective of coming out with pace, coming out with speed, coming out with someone that can push the ball and someone that can be like adhesive on those guards, just annoying them, a little bit of like a gnat, Brandon Pajemski. Let Clay come off and be focused on just his game. Not having to start anything up, you know, starting the pace up, not having to worry about anything like that. That's my opinion. I think he would be phenomenal coming off the bench and just having to worry about get your shot up. Mm -hmm. And then also having, if Steph is back, that means CP3 goes back to the yeah. point guard position in the second unit. I'm thinking Clay Thompson, CP3. Beauty. Okay. Okay. I mean, I get it. If Kerr is That's really going to make that second unit solidify and make that a fixture, yeah. CP3 plays next to Clay Thompson. And you know that's important to him, keeping units as much as possible. Yes. I mean, even though 22 tonight. I'm just... <laughs> 22nd. Something is making lineup. me think, I don't know, my antenna is twitching. I could be totally wrong, and that's I mean, part of the fun. Be. That's part I know. of the I'm fun. Glad, I'm glad I'm trying to work it out now. So, okay. We will see you on Saturday. Um, when we come back, we need to take a look at the standings because, Zita, you mentioned things are tight. The Lakers are right ahead of them. Let's take a look at what is coming up for the Warriors when we're back on Dubstock Live, brought to you by Mancini Sleep World. Catherine oh says, I cannot wait for WNBA at Chase. You are exactly yes. right, Kat. Ooh, ooh, Guys, ooh. I had a, a hair in my eye that was like literally digging into me. Oh, I couldn't see it, and you didn't even blink. You were like, I was oh. like, mm -hmm. no, you got it. You're good. I'm going to. Um, Allup says, wonder when they're going to announce the WNBA team's name. I'm, I'm so looking forward to that, and, and I don't know the answer to that. Um, I don't know either. Vitsi says, Wiggins looking great tonight in the second half, attacking the basket. Easy layups. There you go. Easy layups, that's what you want. Well, you've got 13 blocks from the Mavericks. Did anything come easy tonight? My goodness, yeah. my goodness. Uh, Anda says, I 100% agree with Zena. I think the Lakers struggle with pace and up-tempo games. Kings are working the Lakers tonight. Okay, there you go. If you can see, get a here's fast the start. Thing about like Wiggins, like easy layups in the second half. Mm -hmm. Only three of them. He had five at the half. Okay. You yeah. know what I mean? And so it's like, that's not... Yeah. He's got to come oh. out with more 
confidence. Here's a factor. If BP wants to be like a mini Draymond, a young Draymond, and Draymond's not playing in that Lakers game, I mean, he can't do what, what Draymond does on defense, obviously, but if he wants to be like, I don't know, a low turnover, high assist, like intense guy on defense, then BP starts. I don't know. I mean, I the thing like about one thing that's important for BP as well that I didn't mention, not only from a pace perspective, he's a rebounding guard. Excuse me? He's a rebounding guard. Yes, 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 yes. And that's huge, especially against the Lakers that have height mm -hmm. on the outside and inside. Mm -hmm. um, you want someone that aggressively goes after the basket. And Clay, don't get me wrong, Clay Thompson also gets some, but. Where are we going, Flo? Okay, okay. Quick block? Okay. Welcome back to Dubs Talk Live. All right, here are the standings. The Warriors did not get the W tonight. They did not gain any more ground. There they are, fixed in that 10th position. The Lakers right ahead of them. I think I think there's two Lakers games left. There's two Mavericks games left, I want to say. The Warriors have 17 games left total, and it's going to be difficult to get out of that plane at this point. All right, looking at the schedule coming up, we're talking about this Lakers game. Warriors, again, have two days off. Friday is that important day for Steph's practice. Okay, he's going to be reevaluated after that practice and hopefully joining the team on Saturday. Monday is our women's empowerment game. Uh, we've got some Eastern Conference teams coming. And yeah, then the Warriors are back on the road. So, Zena, it really feels like we are accelerating toward the end of the season. Steve Kerr keeps saying this team can get on a run. What do you think? I do think they can get on a run. The thing about it, though, is everyone else is also going to get on a run. This is a time of year where everyone else understands what's at stake. And so when you get on a run, when you being the Warriors, you have to understand that that has to be an elevated run because everyone else is also elevating their level of play. Mm -hmm. It's just difficult for the Warriors because out of these 17 games, they really can't afford to lose any more. They're only they're four games behind that sixth seed. So more than likely they may have to shift their outlook on where they're going to land. Mm. And if it comes down to the play-in games, that's a one game in or out. That's March Madness, baby. Yeah. So that's, that's the level of pressure. So if you want to elevate your game to get yourself out of that situation, it's got to be another level. Yeah, the Warriors experienced the play-in before. They lost to the Lakers, they lost to the Grizzlies, and suddenly season was over. They know what that feels like. That was in 2021. The Warriors want to avoid that, but it's getting more difficult to get out of the box, the way that Molly puts it. 17 games left. I feel like they have to win at least 12 of those to get to the high 40s. Could be tough. All right, Dubstock Live brought to you by Mancini Sleep World continues on YouTube. Yeah, Ron Burgundy. I'm Ron Burgundy, question marks. It's hard to get out of the play-in, but easy to fall out of it. Yeah. I don't know because the Warriors took this loss to the Mavericks. They took one of the losses to the Spurs. I think they're kind of locked in now. Yeah. I don't, I don't think I, that sixth is starting to feel a little bit more. Locked into the play-in, like 7, 8, 9, 10? Yes, that's what I'm yeah, yeah, locked, yeah. locked in the box. Uh, yeah. yeah. Locked in the box. Yeah, I agree. Trapped in the closet? <gasps> <gasps> <laughs> well, I don't know. Locked, locked in the box. That's the, that's the basketball version. That's the basketball version. Yes, 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 yes. That's funny. Oh, okay. You know what? Somebody's telling us good night. I think that's a sign. Let's say good night. Um, I'm not working that Lakers game, but, but are you here? I am here, y'all. Okay. So tune in. Zena will be running the show. All right. And I'll see you Monday. We will see you Monday for a really special occasion. And please tune in and listen to that Jonathan Kaminga podcast coming out tomorrow. It's, it's good stuff. I'm excited. All right. Thank you. Good night. Night, guys.